Hiding under the water's surface of Lake Xochimilco in Mexico City is one of the most peculiar living creatures, the axolotl. With its feathery-like gills protruding from its head and its unrivaled ability to fully grow back lost limbs, the axolotl has many features that make them unique. But one of their strangest abilities is that in a sense they stay young their whole lives. Unlike their closest relative, the tiger salamander, that goes through stages of metamorphosis, axolotls have evolved to never leave their juvenile life stage, and they are not alone in having adapted to retain juvenile traits into adulthood, as this is a phenomenon called neoteny that affects many animals throughout nature. So why and how do animals do this? Neoteny doesn't just affect amphibians, and it can affect all living animals, including mammals. Some of the most common genes that humans have selected for in domesticated animals are the ones that control the development of certain physical features that animals gain during adolescence. This is the reason certain dog breeds retain juvenile traits into adulthood, consequently making them look cuter. This would be features like floppy ears, big eyes, a flatter face with a shorter snout, and having a rounder skull with less of a brow ridge. Dog breeds are human creations, but these traits and other developmental controlling genes can be teethed out by natural selection as well, so animals can end up staying younger looking into adulthood naturally. For example, the common hippo's only other living close relative, the pygmy hippo, lives in the jungles and swamps of Western Africa. While being around a quarter of the size of a regular hippo, they have many facial and body features that make them just look like a juvenile common hippo. As common hippos grow older, their snout elongates and becomes significantly broader, but pygmy hippos retain a smaller and more rounded snout into adulthood, making them look like a baby hippo. Pygmy hippos are fairly distantly related to the common hippo, but it is known that their closest relatives would have been a similar size to regular hippos, and so they have adapted to become much smaller to suit their environment. On the island of Mindoro in the Philippines, there is a species of buffalo known as the Tamoro that is essentially a pygmy version of the water buffalo found on the mainland, and fossil evidence shows that they were once much more common throughout many of the islands across the Philippines. Much like the pygmy hippo, they aren't just smaller and have actually retained many juvenile traits, like larger eyes and a shorter snout, making them look like an infant Asian water buffalo. Animals evolve these neotenous traits simply because something in their infant form was giving them an advantage in their environment, and so there was a selective pressure to maintain it for longer. Both the pygmy hippo and the tamoro descend from larger animals and have adapted to become smaller while sexually mature adults. In certain environments, most commonly isolated landmasses like small islands, being smaller offers some advantages, as smaller animals need less food to survive, and they may have less predators also, so being smaller isn't such an issue as it otherwise may be. So both of these creatures have adapted smaller body sizes to better suit a new environment by delaying their development process, and retaining certain juvenile traits in a way is a side effect of this change. Neoteny is a type of evolution that is called heterochrony, where organisms evolve by genetically changing, delaying, or speeding up certain aspects of their development process. When an animal makes an adaptation to a new environment, they can do this by gaining new genetic material, or adapt to their environment by subtly shifting how existing genes are already being used. And this is how heterochrony, and by extension neoteny, works. The advantage of evolving like this is that animals can undergo significant changes in a comparatively much smaller amount of time than mutating extra genes. And this helps them to adapt to new environments in far fewer generations. And this is what has happened with axolotls. Like all amphibians, after hatching, salamanders go through an aquatic larvae stage, but sexually mature adults have lungs, and typically spend the majority of their time on land. Most salamanders slowly develop these lungs throughout their aquatic stage, until fairly abruptly losing their headgills, making their primary way of breathing via lungs instead of gills. Because axolotls keep their gills, they can live under the water indefinitely, but only survive away from it momentarily whereas most salamanders lose this ability, and will need to surface to breathe eventually, but can breathe more efficiently out of the water, and develop skin that stops them drying out as quickly on land. The axolotl's closest relative is the tiger salamander, which goes through all the life stages of a normal salamander, and lives and breeds in the same lake as the axolotl. However, study has shown that axolotls routinely outlive these normal salamanders, 
showing there is a selective pressure for axolotls to remain juvenile. The process of metamorphosis requires a lot of energy for salamanders, so they are naturally at a disadvantage over axolotls. However, for most salamander species, the ability to feed both on land and water, as well as other advantages that come with metamorphizing into an adult, make this extra energy expenditure pay off in the long run. Why being an adult in the lakes around Mexico City seems to not pay off for salamanders isn't completely understood, but it may have something to do with these lakes being at high altitudes. Certain aspects of high altitude environments, like cooler temperatures and lower oxygen levels, make ecosystems slightly less productive, which would favour energy saving animals. And there are other examples of neotenous pockets of animals adapting at higher elevations. Neoteny can also be a long lasting ancestral trait that are inherited and then define large groups of animals. Despite being reptiles, crocodiles are actually more closely related to birds than any other living reptiles. Crocodiles and birds, and by extension dinosaurs, are members of a group of animals named the archosaurs that separated from the other reptiles around 250 million years ago and became highly successful in the Triassic period around 250 to 240 million years ago. During this period in the early Triassic, most archosaurs were vaguely crocodilian in appearance, as this is the primitive condition of this group of animals. However, rather early in their evolution, one group of them became a lot more comfortable walking and running on their hind legs bipedally, and these creatures would eventually give rise to the dinosaurs, and then the birds. Crocodiles have just changed a lot less since their common ancestor with birds and dinosaurs, which is why they look the way they do. And you can learn more about crocodile evolution and dinosaurs in this video here. Dinosaurs are descendants of a group of archosaurs that adapted to run on two legs, but they also possessed many other common characteristics. One being that early dinosaurs have a much shorter snout and larger eye proportion to their skulls than crocodilians, and then among later more advanced theropod dinosaurs and prehistoric toothed birds, this trend continues to the point where their skull doesn't change very much at all into adulthood the snout remaining quite short and thin compared to the way crocodile skulls change throughout their life. But neoteny doesn't only happen to non-human animals, and humans are actually a brilliant example of neotenous creatures too. And a lot of the adaptations that humans have made after separating from the other apes may not have been by the addition of extra genetic material, and actually may have come from retaining certain juvenile ape traits into adulthood. For decades it has been known that humans share resemblance to newborn chimps. Chimpanzee skulls have much thicker brow ridges and a much larger mouth and robust lower jawbone than human skulls. However, chimpanzees do not have these very conspicuous features their whole lives, and their skull-shaped traits form during adolescence as they grow into adults. And infant chimpanzee skulls have a very striking resemblance to human skulls, with a small jaw and a flat face. And study has shown that many of the similarities that humans have with baby non-human apes aren't just a coincidence, and there is genetic evidence that many of the genes that humans share with apes have been altered to increase the development time. Humans and their closest ape relatives, bonobos and chimpanzees, last had a common ancestor around 7 million years ago, and then humans and their other close relatives that are now extinct evolved the many big differences that humans have with the rest of the ape family. Some researchers claim this may be responsible for things much deeper than just physical features and a slower rate of development may have even contributed to high human intelligence. By stretching out ape adolescence, it also increases the amount of time where apes are most amenable to learning and gaining knowledge. And there actually is some genetic evidence to support this, as scientists have identified brain genes shared by humans and chimps, but they activate later in development in humans. However, although this proves that certain aspects of human brain development are neotenic, this doesn't prove that the single reason humans are so intelligent is due to the late activation of certain genes in the brain, and is most likely just a small part of the picture. So hidden behind the cuteness of animals like axolotls and dwarf versions of larger mammals is actually an incredibly powerful evolutionary phenomenon that has allowed them to adapt to their environments with lightning speed. Thank you for watching. The big thank you goes to all my patrons for supporting the channel especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.